One of FileMaker's dynamic layout objects that can prove very useful in your layout designs is the Tab Control object. In an earlier lesson, I showed you how to add a Tab Control object to a layout, and to demonstrate, I added this three panel Tab Control to the example layout here. Now I'd like to take a slightly closer look at the options, setup, and behavior of the Tab Control object. First of all, in layout mode, I'll add a couple of elements to each of the tabs as that'll make it more interesting, as well as easier to see what's going on. So on the first tab, I'll add a field from the current table. Using the Field tool on the Status Toolbar, I'll drag down into the tab area, having first selected the tab of course. Select the Note Text field. Drag the Note Text field label up above the field. And I'll select and resize the note text field so it more or less fills the tab control panel that's currently active. Then on the third tab, I'll add some text using the text tool from the status toolbar, dragging an area in which to place the text. And as this is just an example, it doesn't matter too much what I add, it's just to let you get a feel for how things work. So I'll enter a list of attributes from the current context. Perhaps the file name, a couple of tab characters, and I'll choose the insert menu, other symbol, type an F to jump down the list of options to insert, and we'll insert the symbol for file name. And I'll press a couple of return characters, and let's repeat the exercise and put in date, a couple of tab characters and we'll insert the date symbol, which will cause FileMaker to display the current date. A couple more returns, and perhaps I'll put in system, tab characters, and we'll insert other symbol, and we'll jump down to the S's, typing on the keyboard to jump ahead down the list, and I'll choose system version. Now I'll press the Enter key to complete the exercise of creating the text object, and I'll resize the object to be a little bit shorter in height. And now I'll drag the button we created in a previous lesson and position it below the text within the button. Now back in browse mode, let's take a look at what we've got. The first tab has a field in it which is interactive. I can enter data and edit data. The second tab has the web viewer that we added in a previous lesson, and the third tab is now showing the file name, the date, and the system version. This is OS X 10.6.8 that I'm using here, and the button is active in the third tab. So we have different content in each of these three tab control tabs. Back in layout mode, I'll now double click on the tab control, and that brings up the tab control setup dialog so that I can edit or reset any of the attributes of the tab control. First of all, I might change the tab control tab labels so that they make more sense in relation to what I have on each of the tabs. We'll call the first tab Note Data. I'll click the Rename button and you'll see that in the list the name has now changed to Note Data. The second control can be called Google Web Search. And the third tab I'll just call General Info. Over at the right, we have a number of other options. First of all, we can choose which tab will be the default tab. We can justify the tabs in a variety of ways. I'll choose Full Justification, which will spread the tabs across the full width of the tab panel. And we can determine the tab width in other ways. When I click OK, the changes that I've made are applied to the tab immediately. Now the tab labels are spread across the full width of the panel and are showing the new names that I gave them in the setup dialog. Next, a tab control is what's called a container object in FileMaker, not to be confused with the type of field called a container field, which we'll talk about later. A container object is an object that can hold within it other objects such as the text and button objects on this general info panel, the web viewer, or on the note data panel, the field label, and the field box for the note text field. When objects such as these are within a container, when we move the container object around, all of the contained objects move with it. 
they're, if you like, held within the object that contains them. So now, with respect to the top left of the tab control object, all of the objects have moved to a new position according to where I've positioned the tab object on the layout. Another thing I'd like to talk about with respect to tab controls is the way you can set them to be operated by the keyboard. This is a bit confusing because the tab control is not to be confused with the tab key on the keyboard. I'm now going to choose the layouts set tab order command to bring up the set tab order dialog. And now you can see that there's an arrow pointing to the tab sections of the tab control, and it has the number one. So if I click OK and go back to browse mode, I can press the tab key on the keyboard to go to the tab control and make it active. And now I can use the arrow keys to choose a different tab and the return key or the spacebar to make that tab the active tab. So by using the arrow keys and the return key, I'm using the keyboard to navigate between the tab panels on this tab control.